Dear students, we start module three. In this module, we talk about equilibrium of a particle, very important chapter. Uh, it is very fundamental in statics and in dynamics. I strongly encourage you to fully comprehend the concept I introduced in this chapter. Uh, take as long as is required to understand them. And if you have any question, please get back to me. So we talk about the equilibrium of a particles and free body diagram, which is the most important thing in statics. Uh, I encourage my students to draw the free body diagram in the exam because no matter what uh, you do after that, if your free body diagram is not uh, properly uh, constructed, the result would be uh, meaningless. Very, very important section, free body diagram. I go to every single uh, basic of drawing a free body diagram and I hope you uh, closely follow it. So we talk about uh, free body diagram and also equilibrium in two and three dimensional uh, space. Let's have a simple quiz. Uh, when a particle is in equilibrium, the sum of the forces acting on at equals to what? Equals to a constant value, a negative number, an integer, a positive number, or zero. Well, we talk about the statics. The object is in steady state, it's not moving. So all the forces, they should be in equilibrium, meaning that the sum of the, all the forces should be equal to zero. Uh, that is the correct answer. So uh, the sum of the forces should be equal to zero. As another uh, example, so we have a pulley is frictionless. There's no friction. What is the relation between T1 and T2? Well, uh, is T1 and T2 are equal? Is T equal? Uh, then T1 equal to T2 sine theta. A common mistake is sometimes students will say, okay, well, here we go, there's one force here, and this uh, force, this component is T2 sine theta, and they should cancel each others. It means they, they assume this is the correct answer. This is not actually correct. The fact is when you have a frictionless pulley, both sides tension in the rope are equal. And it means that this is the correct answer. When we construct the free body diagram of this pulley, we realize this is correct. So in order to do it correctly, you have to do the free body diagram at this point. And in this point, obviously you have all the forces equal to each other. So uh, one goes here and one goes here. This cancel this and this cancel this. We will talk about it uh, in uh, detail later on. Well, application of a free body diagram and this section is obviously when uh, you want to lift something or you want to construct something, you always have to feel uh, what, you, what are the forces you have to understand and then you construct a free body diagram and then you uh, conduct your design. You want to know how strong, for example, the, the bar uh, BC should be, uh, how much force is applied in this hook, and you have to know what kind of crane you have to bring. So these are important uh, to uh, answer. Uh, there's another uh, question, how much you can lift by this setup. Uh, what is uh, the tension on these ropes when you have these two traffic lights been hanging uh, from this pole? So how we do it, it's very simple. If you understand the fundamental of it, it is really effortless. So let me give you an example. So you can see that we have an engine, a weight, so that's 250 kilogram, is hanging by three ropes. Rope 
AC, rope AB, and rope AD. So you should realize right now we have three forces acting at this point A. So if I want to have it here, so we have one force coming down. It is the force of W of the engine, which is 250 multiplied by 9.81 Newton. There is one force here. I'll call it TAB. And there is a force here. I'll call it TAD. Here is a free body diagram. So, all I did, I have this point, I have to identify which point, so this is the point I picked, the correct one, often it's very obvious, I'm not going to uh, use this point or this point, so I'm using a point that I can identify the uh, unknown, in this case is how much is the tension on these two ropes, what kind of ropes, with which kind of uh, cross-section or thickness I have to use in order to sustain the weight. Okay. Um, so, so imagine uh, the particle to be isolated or cut free from its surroundings and show all the forces as exactly what we did. So we have here uh, the particle A, point A, and point A has uh, these three forces. So we try to uh, isolate this point and draw the required uh, forces. So then identify what are knowns and what are unknowns? And as I mentioned that in this case, we have two unknowns, which is TAB, tension in cable AB, and TAD, tension in cable D. And that's all you need to do. This is a very important part of solving any uh, static questions or problems. So here is our free body diagram. So we have two forces, uh, one force going down known and two unknown forces, which is TD or TAD or TB. So the next step is to writing the equilibrium on both axes. So if something is in equilibrium, uh, therefore in X and Y in 2D and in X, Y, Z in 3D, it should be in equilibrium, it means some of the forces should be equal to zero. How many forces do we have on X direction? Well, on X direction, I have two forces. I have TAD or TD, and then I have the projection of TB, which is TB cosine 30 degree. So it means this. This is TB cosine 30 degree. So these two forces are in equilibrium. How about in Y direction? In Y direction, I have my weight of the engine, 250 kilogram by 9.81. And then I have the Y component of TB, so which is this. This is TB sine 30 degree. So I simply write them uh, in both uh, x and y, sum of the, all the forces on x equals 0, sum of the, all the forces on y equals 0. If is in equilibrium means the summation, this should be 0, means both on x and y in 2D, it should be 0. And then we can simply write the equations here. So as I continue here, TB cosine 30 minus TD equal to zero, and TB sine 30 uh, minus uh, 2.452 kilonewton or 2,452 uh, newton should be equal to zero. Right away from this equation, we have one uh, 
variable, one equation, so one unknown here. We can calculate the T, B, and then you plug it in the, the first one and you find T, D. So simply you can calculate both of them and the answer uh, is TB is equal to 4.9 kilonewton and TD is 4.25 kilonewton. So if we know what are the tensions on those two cables. So let's talk about spring and cables, pulleys. Uh, important, we use these mechanical devices in many uh, static setups. Uh, a spring, we will talk more in statics uh, during the term, but uh, when you have a spring, and if this is uh, in a spring with uh, a homogeneous spring with a constant K, the equation is the force is proportional to the extension or retraction of the spring multiplied by a k, which is the constant of the spring. So uh, this is a unit of length, millimeter, centimeter, uh, and usually we write this one as S2 minus S1. So the final length minus the initial length. Uh, and this is the constant, which is usually uh, Newton per meter or centimeter and so on. So finally, this value uh, would be per Newton. So Newton divided by meter multiplied by meter. So it would be uh, from the dimension. We mentioned that it always has to be uh, worked out. Uh, as far as the pulley is concerned, tension in both sides of the pulleys are equal if this is a frictionless pulley. So never doubt if you have a pulley is frictionless, both sides of the pulley, the, kitchen, the tension of the rope is the same. Uh, let's have uh, another problem, very simple problem. Uh, we have a, a car being towed or pulled by uh, another, maybe uh, another car. So what we have here is uh, we have 600 Newton, uh, in this case, sorry, pound being applied to pull this car. And, you know, if you want to draw the free body diagram, you do it for this point, obviously. That's the point. So you have this and then you have two forces, one force here and one force here. So these are two forces. You take this point and uh, you isolate it. The car is towed at the constant speed by 600 pound force and the angle uh, is 25 uh, degree. I believe it refers to um, this angle, theta, 25 degree. The other angle is 30 degree. Uh, determine the forces in cable AB and AC. So first free body diagram at point A, applying the equation of equilibrium in two dimensional uh, space and you find these values. Bear in mind when you uh, pick your point that you want to isolate that, you have to make sure you only have in two dimensional at most two unknowns. If you have three unknowns, then it's not the right point. Maybe you have to start from somewhere else. So, because in two dimension, you have some of the forces on X equals zero gives you one equation, some of the forces on Y equals zero gives you the second equation. You have two equations, two equations, you can only solve two unknowns. So let's continue here exactly what uh, we, we draw. So 600, these two forces and all you need to do uh, is to write the equation of the equilibrium on x and y on x we have x component of this cancel x component of this fc cosine 30 uh, minus fb cosine 25 equals zero 
and in y direction both of these two y direction should cancel the other one so minus f a c sine 30 minus f a b sine 25 should be equal to 600 and simply you can calculate two equations two variables the uh, the unknowns here is a slightly more advanced question and if you remember in previous slide i mentioned that you start from a point that you can solve uh, two equation two variables to find two unknowns so we have four points obviously these two points are no need to isolate them it doesn't give you uh, any uh, unknown but we have one point here one point here so the question says uh, you have a sack a the sack has the weight of 20 pounds and here is the geometry. So find uh, the forces on the cables and the weight of this sack. Well, if I start from point C and a free body diagram is one force going this way, one force going this way, one force going this way. Well, yeah, that, that's a correct free body diagram. But how many unknown do I have? I don't know the sack B. Uh, weight and I don't know uh, neither of these two cables tension so I have three variables I won't be able to solve three variables or three unknowns uh, in a two dimensional space in two uh, sets of equations so logically so I should go to start from this point so this point one force going this way one force going this way and one force going here and this is given so i can simply write the equation of equilibrium to solve uh, this values here so let me continue so draw the free body diagram at point e first and then uh, you calculate the forces TEG and TEC. And then when you have TEC, then you write the free body, the draw the free body diagram at point C and write the equation of equilibrium by having the force TEC, uh, which is equal to TCE, you can simply uh, solve the other. Uh, to unknowns, which is the weight of the sack B, as well as the force T, C, D. Let me uh, write these values. First equation of the equilibrium at point E. So at point E, we have three forces, two unknowns, T, E, G, and T, E, C are unknown. So the forces on X equals zero. You have two Xs. You have X of T. Uh, eg and then on the other side you have uh, the x of tec equal to zero is the first equation and then you have some of the forces on y equals zero in this case you have one positive y which is the y component of teg and you have two negative going downward uh, y components which is the y components of the uh, sac weight directly down and the y components of TEC so you write that one here two equations two variables you can simply find the value of uh, TEC and TEG and then you go to the next uh, point in order to find the weight of the sac B here you write the equation of equilibrium at point C and at point C you already have this force so we already have this and then you have now two unknowns previously we have three unknowns so two unknowns and you write the equation of the equilibrium x of this cancel x of this and y of these two together should counteract the weight of the sac uh, b and you can simply calculate the weight of the sac which is 47.8 pounds if 
uh, you want to pause here or rewind, please feel free to do it. This is an interesting question. So you have to, you know, know from where you start. Let's have some concept questions. Uh, question one, uh, it's saying that we have uh, a pulley. So we have a weight here. Uh, has 1,000 pounds. The pulley is A, pulley B, and pulley C. Assuming you know the geometry of the ropes, angles, length, you cannot determine the forces in cables in which of these systems. So, well, you know that this is thousand pounds coming down on each of them. So, in this case, well, we know both sides of the pulleys are equal, so it means these two are each of them equal to 500. This is doable. On this one, Assuming you know these angles, you can write the equation of the equilibrium and these are the forces going this way. Yes, you can calculate and determine the rope uh, tension on each of them. But when it comes to C, you have four of them. And I have no way to solve this uh, two equation for unknowns. So that's why this is not determinable undeterminable so the answer is C why obviously because the number of the unknowns are more than the number of the equations uh, is it because the weights too heavy no uh, is it because the cable is too thin no is it because there are too uh, few cables no because there are more unknowns than the equations so here is the answer interesting concept question So it's another uh, quiz, select the correct free body diagram uh, for point A. Point A, I <clears throat> write it down myself. So A, we have one force coming down is the W and two forces going this way. So you can see which one is obviously correct. Incorrect, incorrect, we talk about the free body diagram. This Partially correct is missing the W, so this is the correct answer uh, in this question. Another uh, quiz, using the free body diagram of point C, the sum of the forces on X direction is equal to what? On X direction, obviously this doesn't have any X component, you have two forces only. One is 20 pounds negative, and the other one is F2 cosine 50. So sign is incorrect, sign is incorrect. This could have been correct, but the sign here is, uh, they are not the same direction. So the answer is this. This is the correct answer. Simple. Now that we discussed about the two dimensional, we have X and Y, simply we can add the third dimension, which is the Z, and it's pretty much exactly the same thing too. You have one more uh, component. So you have some of the forces on X equals zero, some of the forces on Y equals zero, and now you add some of the forces on uh, Z equals zero. So you have three equations. In that case, you can have three unknowns. So, um, same thing, you draw the free body diagram. You should pay more attention because it's a little more complex. And you uh, apply the three scalar uh, equation to find the unknown. Uh, simple example, you have three uh, chain connecting with this gigantic magnet to uh, get all the scrap metal perhaps uh, drop it in the furnace. So we can determine the forces on the chain because of the fact that you are in three dimension, you have three unknown, three chains. Another example here, now, uh, uh, this is in a jetty and you have uh, a net full of fishes. So 
in this case here you want to know what are the, the forces here in this tree so you have the weight of this then you have three unknowns the forces here and here and here and you can calculate that simply Uh, writing the equation of the equilibrium again, a uh, particle here, so you write some other force on x, y, z equals zero, and you get the desirable unknowns. Let's put them in a practice. Example one, you have a particle O and there are four forces applied to this uh, particle. Three of them are known, F1, F2, and F3. The question asking what is the magnitude uh, the Cartesian components of force F in order to have equilibrium. Well, the free body diagram is given. Force F2 uh, and F1 are very straightforward. So F1 is 400I Newton, F2 is 800G Newton negative. So F3, so the Geometry is given. So I, I hope you remember from previous lecture how to calculate when you have two points. You have this point, this point you have. You should find the x, y, z of the point B. x of the point B is minus 2. y of the point B is minus 3. And z is 6. So right away, you can calculate or find the vector OB. Next step, you find the unit vector of OB. And then you multiply by the magnitude of force F3. You have the Cartesian components of uh, vector F3. Then you write the equation of equilibrium. All the x's equal 0, all the y equals 0, all the z equals 0. And you find x, y, z uh, component of uh, the unknown force F. So uh, let's write these in uh, actual uh, situation. So uh, these are these two forces F1 and F2. F3 as I mentioned you uh, calculate you see you have uh, these three points as I mentioned that divided by the magnitude of the vector this gives you a unit vector multiply by the magnitude of the vector these are the cartesian components of vector f3 now whatever x y z of this vector is should cancel x y z of these three so you add you can do two ways you can add all of them you find x, y, z of the resultant of these three, and this x, y, z of the s, f should be exactly negative of those values to counteract. Or you can write a simple equation, all of them in one uh, equals zero, and then you find x, y, z of f. So, some forces, I did this in the second way. On x equals zero, so we have only one. Uh, value here the x is equal to 200 for f so on forces on y equals zero so in this case we have uh, these two and you find the y and then if you call uh, so on forces on z equals zero and you find this so very simple way to uh, deal with uh, this problem and uh, your uh, unknown force X, Y, Z's are these values, 200I minus 100J plus 200K. I suggest the students often at the end to, in order to double check, let's put all of them equal to zero, see if the answer is correct. Or you add those F1, F2, F3, you will see that the answer of uh, some of the forces F1, uh, 2, and 3, should be equal to minus 200i plus 100j minus 200k. This should be correct because then you add them with the f, it should be this cancel this, this cancel this, this cancel this. And that means you did a correct calculation. 
in next few slides, I will go over uh, some common situation as far as the free body diagram is concerned. Uh, when you see these, you will be very comfortable to draw the free body diagram. First of all, when you have an object as uh, on a steady surface, a book on a table, or when you stand on uh, the floor, so you always have the weight which is going down, and then, of course, there is a reaction force from the ground or from the table uh, to your feet or to the book. Often a student will say, oh, I don't feel it. What is that force? Well, of course, there is there. You know, I said, if you want to really feel it, you put a little bit of uh, maybe a uh, small stone or uh, you know, a small nail. When you stand, you feel, wow, it hurts. That is the reaction force. Uh, that the nail put in your uh, the bottom of your foot. So when you stand on the floor, the weight going down and the reaction force uh, uh, from the floor or the ground would be reacting the opposite direction of your weight. And this is the correct uh, free body diagram. Someone is standing on a scale, exact same thing. So the weight counteract uh, and what you measure actually on the scale is the reaction force uh, and f equal to zero opposite direction very common you have a block on a slope so this angle is theta this angle is 90 minus theta. So very simple. It starts like this. So you have one block here. So the block has a weight this way. So because it's always the gravity goes down W, but in this setup, so because your surface is an angle, it's much more convenient. I break this to two components. One is perpendicular to the surface and one is parallel. So if this is theta, this is also theta. So this is W cosine theta and this is W sine theta. And from there you can get to what I have here. So uh, Now you have mg, which is w, mg cosine, mg sine. This n is the reaction force of the surface. And this, if this is coming down, later on we talk about this is the force of friction, which is, in this case, is mu mg cosine theta. We will talk about it. So in this case, if there is no, obviously, friction, this thing slides down, obviously. If there is a friction, the friction is equal to uh, mg uh, sine. It goes with the constant velocity uh, sliding down. If it's more, obviously, it does not move. If it's less, then it accelerates uh, down the slope. So these are the forces. Again, gravity. The normal force counteract, which is mg cosine theta, the force that is pushes this object down, uh, mg sine, and the force of friction. Very, very important. Uh, please review this before you go to next slide. Now you are skiing the same thing now in this case. Um, and assuming the, the force of uh, friction is not much or zero friction, so what you have here is same. So you have the gravity, so you have the force that you are pressing down to the surface, the reaction force, these two cancel each other, and this force is what 
causing you is that in, in fact is your weight is causing you to push forward in the ski slope uh, pretty much the same thing uh, as we talk so uh, in a horizontal surface and two uh, slopes depends on you going up or you going down it makes a difference these two are pretty much the same except sometimes don't get confused if this angle is given theta this is correct if i give you this angle theta everything sine and cosine would uh, change their places so it would be i recommend that the students understand the fundamental and don't try to memorize just look at what angle is given and the other angle is obviously 90 minus that particular angle. And uh, um, a motorbike is going up now. In this case, kind of interesting because in this case, motorbike uh, is going up. Friction is helping the motorbike. The friction is the force. It's coming from the torque of the engine, but the fact is moving this way. And the friction is pushing it up and what is against it is here mg sine so mg sine is stopping it from going up and the friction force is pushing it uh, up the hill um, an airplane you have the thrust you have the drag you have the lift and you have the weight So a knight is standing on uh, a bridge. Let's do the uh, body diagram here. So see there are, for the whole setup, so you have the weight of the bridge is going here, the weight of the knight and horse is going here. At this point, you have obviously a rope. And at this point, this is a kind of hinge and you have two forces x direction and y direction in total one two three four five uh, forces you have what else do you have what are ways i'm missing here anyone can help me think about for a couple of seconds well yes this is an angle therefore this is going this way therefore there is there is a friction going this way it's also the friction if you want to do, for example, also the horse, the horse also, uh, you have the normal forces here. If this is straight, then there is no uh, friction because it's not moving. A lady standing on a ladder. Here is the weight of the ladder. Here is uh, the weight of the lady. And then you have now, uh, is this this ladder is pushing to the wall and wall is reacting this is the reaction force of the wall and also uh, at this point here you have friction is pushing it this way going that way uh, and you have the counter force of uh, the, the pressure at this point so you have total one, two, three, four, five forces. We will cover exact uh, problem uh, in friction uh, slides. Example number two. Uh, we have a crate has been hanging from point A, and we have three ropes: A, D, A, C, and A, B. The rope AB at the end is connected to a spring. So a spring is, um, has the K constant of 1.5 kilonewton per meter. So obviously the question is asking, find the tension in rope AC and AD, as well as the stretch in the spring. The weight of uh, the crate is 100, uh, multiplied by 9.81 newton the mass is 100 kilogram so what is the strategy first you draw the free body diagram at point a you write the equation of equilibrium uh, there are three forces here 
So force AD is given by the geometry, same uh, method, you find point D and find vector AD and find unit vector AD. Uh, whatever is the unit vector, you multiply by the magnitude of the force and you have XYZ component of the force. Force AC is easier because you have the unit vector, you have the angle, you have the direction cosine. And obviously the AB is aligned with X direction. So you uh, find the value of the AB, tension in the rope AB, and then you can use the formula of uh, FB equal to K constant is given multiplied by the stretch, which would be calculated. Free body diagram, FD, F, uh, C, F, B, and W. Write the equation of the equilibrium forces uh, on all uh, three axes that should be equal to zero. So F, B itself has only one component. F, C has X, Y, Z component, and these are the direction cosine. So here is F, C, you have all F, C here. And uh, F, D, as I mentioned, you find R, D, and then you divide that by uh, the, the magnitude. This would be uh, the Cartesian components, and then you equal them uh, with the, the force of uh, the weight of the crane. So here are the equation of the equilibrium. One, two, three. So uh, how do we solve them? There are, uh, you can use simply the elimination method. You can use also uh, the matrix uh, method, numeric calculation. This would be uh, up to you. You can plug it into your uh, calculator if this is allowed by your instructor uh, many ways but either way you get the answer correctly hopefully and these are the values so at the end you find the value of fb and then you know that at the end of the row b there is a spring and the spring has been stretched how much well this is the force applied and we know that this is the spring constant the spring would be extended 46.2 centimeter. So step by step, you get to this point. Uh, now we have a group problem solving. Uh, we have a slab of concrete being lifted by uh, maybe a, a crane and we have three forces, A, B, A, C, and A, D. The geometry is given, the weight of the slab uh, it is given is a plate. So you want to find the tension in the cable. Once again, you have the point, uh, this point is A, and you know that at this point, the weight is this way, the reaction force of that. So you can draw the free body diagram, sorry, not this one, so you can, uh, draw the free body diagram this way that's one way of doing it or you can make it the opposite so the reaction force so we have these three forces here uh, unknown you can find the unit vector of a b a c and a uh, d and then uh, same thing as we did previously you uh, multiply them by the magnitude of the force, FAB, FAC, and FAD, and then equal them uh, with the force of the weight of the plate. Here exactly what I did. It shows here, this is a free body diagram, uh, and write the equation here. Uh, in this case, you have to go with all the um, finding the point B, C, D, and then find the vector A, B, A, C, A, D, divide the vector by the, the magnitude of the vector, unit vector, and you multiply by forces. So these are the force, and then 
you equal them equal to zero. All the forces equal to zero, three equations, three variables, and you have be able to solve it, and these are the values. Notice interestingly, F C is equal to zero. Uh, it means the C does not act anything, and uh, you might say, well, why you need it? Well, you could have only two ropes here. The C here, we put it there because what if you have the wind is coming? Then it would not be in a complete equilibrium. Then C, there would be some tension. Or the motion maybe is not completely so smoothly, so there would be a little bit of vibration. That's why uh, it's safer to have an additional uh, rope even though there is no tension on it but it may during the motion there would be some tension obviously when you talk about the motion become dynamics but uh, just the reason in uh, in the real world we use three rope instead of two uh, at this is because you know it, it may go to um, non uh, steady state and there would be some tension on the third cable Uh, a simple quiz. So question say there are four forces acting at point A, and these are in equilibrium. Select the correct uh, P. So you can see that obviously here we have F1, F2, F3. Summation of them is a force that it has 20I plus 10J plus 10 K pound. The force of P, if you want to counteract, has to be negative, negative, negative. And I can see that the answer uh, should be this answer. So, next, in a 3D, when you don't know the direction or the magnitude of a force, how many unknown uh, do you have uh, corresponding to the force? I don't know the direction, and I know them. I don't know the magnitude. How many? Well, I don't know nothing about the force, neither direction nor magnitude in a 3D. Therefore, I have three unknowns. I don't know the x. I don't know the y. I don't know the z. Therefore, there are three unknowns. In a fact, I can only if I don't have uh, neither of these uh, components of that, I can have only one unknown, the force. So uh, other than the one uh, force, I cannot uh, solve it because each force in 3D has three components, X, Y, Z. I can have one missing force only in order to be able to uh, solve it. So anyway, to answer this uh, question, if you don't have the direction, I don't have the unit vector, neither I have the magnitude, therefore I don't have the force, and in a 3D I have uh, three unknown that is related to that force. Very interesting question. Uh, we have a setup in which we have a winch is rotating. Uh, the purpose is to lifting the crate. Uh, we have a pulley here, is a frictionless, we know that the rule of the frictionless pulley is both sides of the pulley, they have the same tension. The question says here, B, C, A, and C, D, both are the same rope, and then they can go up to maximum of 100 pounds. It doesn't say which one can go first, but maximum, they can go 100 pounds. Uh, it says determine the maximum weight that you can lift as well as the angle of theta at that point. Um, this angle also is given uh, by a different setup here. So you can see in this triangle, so the cosine of this angle, so is 5 divided by 13, the sine is 12 divided by 13. 
if we need to find the x and y component of this force, we can simply write down. So uh, I can continue to doing the free body diagram here. This is W, this is T, C, D, this was T, C, B. I have three forces here. So first of all, we know that the tension in both sides of the cable are equal. And for T, C, B is equal W. Uh, how many variables do we have here? Well, let's see. Uh, we have the angle as a variable, and we have this, the weight of the crate, as unknown or variable. So therefore, we have two unknowns and two um, equations. It's a determinable a problem. Uh, I think you should pause here and try to solve it by yourself. Spend about 10, 15 minutes Write the equation of the equilibrium, and then you can uh, move forward, and I can explain to you uh, in more details how we can solve this problem. Interesting problem. Uh, I think by doing it yourself, you will uh, learn quite a bit. So I hope uh, you all found the correct answer, the answer uh, uh, I presented here, but let's just talk about the free body diagram. So T here, and these are W, uh, so on force on X equals zero, how many X do we have? We have uh, T cosine of the angle, as well as W, uh, the X component of this obviously is, uh, as it says here, so we have uh, D, this value, uh, divided by C squared by D squared, square root of that. It's, in a sense, is, if you write it, it would be T cosine theta on uh, X, and then it's minus W, in this case, and if you recall, you mentioned that you want to find this angle equal to this angle. You want cosine of this, which uh, ends up to be uh, 5 divided by 13. This equal to 0. This components and this components. On y direction, you have a positive t up and you have two uh, w, one is W, uh, and one is the sine of this components that should counteract uh, this T. And so in this case here, the T is given, and you have the W, the only two variables, uh, sorry, you don't have a W, the only two variables is the theta as well as the W. So solving it is a little more uh, complex. I'm sure mathematically you can do that here. Um, what I will do, I bring these to one side and you divide them by each other, T cancel T, and you can, uh, this one side will be a tangent, the other side is W, and then you can plug it in the previous one and you can solve it. Anyway, the answers are given here. Uh, Taylor is 78.69. And the maximum of the weight you can carry or lift is 51 pounds. So in a sense, the maximum force, it never happens inside these two ropes. It happens here. So if this become 100, maximum this become 51. If, if this would have been 100, this by far would have been uh, before getting to the 100 at these two points, it would have been uh, torn or cut. Interesting question, highly recommended you review it. Another interesting question we have, and this is a kind of parametric question, often uh, in a static you will see question that there's no numbers parametric, and uh, I always tell my students, if you can solve a problem without a number, correctly, then you can put any numbers. So parametric questions could be 
uh, more confusing. So uh, this is in scale, uh, consists of uh, two uh, weights, small w and large w. Uh, they are hanging from uh, two points. We have uh, two sets of pulleys, one pulley here and one pulley here. Uh, and the question uh, is saying that the size of the pulleys are uh, negligible uh, and the weight of them also negligible compared with the pulley. So uh, we know the weight of capital W. Uh, we want to determine the weight of the small W. Uh, we don't also uh, know the tension on these cables, obviously. So two equation, two variables, uh, free body diagram at this point, and at this point, uh, the geometry is given because we know uh, the y, and we know d divided by two, the length of the rope also is given L. So that would be quite helpful because we know that this length from here, this length is equal to L minus Y. And each of them is L minus Y divided by two. So you have them, in a sense, you have this length, you have this length, then you have these two angles. That is the tricky part in this question. The rest is going to be simple. So a simple free body diagram, W, W, the theta uh, are here. And the theta, as I explained, is uh, known. We can calculate the small W. So here is the H uh, written by this equation here. Uh, you can simply drive this equation. The angles are also given, and uh, you need a little bit of extra work to get to this point, but W is equal to, small w is equal to this term. Uh, I'm sure you will figure it out if you write equations on X and Y. So obviously the X of these cancel each other. The Y of these two should cancel this Y. So therefore, this W, small is equal to two capital W uh, multiplied by the sine of theta. And now you have to calculate sine theta, which is given uh, here. Uh, I have one more question here. I let you do that question as well. Um, this is what we have here, final answer. Uh, the question is, a man attempt to pull down a tree using a cable and a small pulley arrangement. So you have this setup here. So this angle is 30, and this angle is 20. So if the tension in the cable AB is 60 uh, pounds, this is 60 pounds. Determine the tension in cable uh, C, A, D. Obviously, these two are equal, as well as the angle theta. So, interesting question. Um, this is uh, the first step. I suggest you, instead of sticking to the old uh, X and Y, you kind of twist, uh, rotate. Uh, the coordinates to this, it will be very helpful. This is aligned with this angle. And now you realize if this is correct, then this angle is 20 degree uh, and this angle is 30 degree. This tiny angle would be 10 degree. And the rest is going to be very uh, simple. Two equation two variables. I magnify that. Maybe I just um, delete this. Here. Uh, 
here to make it a little better. And here is the new setup. Uh, as I mentioned, that angle would be uh, 10 degree and the equations is here. So on the new setup here, uh, 60 is the tension in this cable uh, B. So 60 cosine 10 degree. This 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 is this is 60 pound. This angle is 30 degree minus T. This one T here, and the other T is here. Cosine of theta is equal to zero on y direction. So you have only two forces on y direction because this is aligned with this on y direction you have this force and you have this force so t sine 60 uh, is equal to 60 sine 10 degree so a simple equation you can see here this is given this is given you factor here from t so it's going to be a minus t 1 minus cosine theta and uh, you can divide them by each other these two equations or you can replace one on the other one either way you will find the answer uh, through this uh, easy equations and the theta would be 20 degree and t the tension in the cable would be 30.51 interesting question perhaps uh, I would call it maybe level two uh, so I would like that you you get familiar with more challenging question uh, interestingly when I saw this uh, problem it reminds me of um, an old TV series like an amazing race still it's on but that was the old one a few years ago I watched and uh, this is uh, a part of that uh, show. Think long and hard. Do what you gotta do to make it go right into that guy. Don't give up on me now, please. Just focus. <laughs> I'm not You've giving up. This. I'm just getting frustrated. Okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you got this, sister. You were super, super close. Right in the kisser. Show that knight who's boss. Oh, oh God. Oh. Really Are you okay? I can't feel my face. Uh. I have the worst headache. Ever. I don't doubt it. Okay, so what do we do now? You have to finish. What? There's no help. I can't even see straight. They don't call it the Amazing Race for nothing. So uh, this is uh, the end of this part. And then the next uh, section, we talk about friction. And here is the final section in this module, friction. Uh, there would be a few slides we talk about the friction. I don't go too detail and deep. I leave it to your static instructor. Uh, a very interesting concept. It could be a convoluted and confusing. Uh, I suggest you uh, when it comes uh, to go to this chapter during the term, pay complete attention and practice. I'm sure there would be questions in the final. Uh, dealing with friction. So friction, is it good, bad? Of course, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, when a car moves or a bicycle, uh, no matter what is the engine, people think, well, the bigger engine is good. Well, yeah, it is, but the friction is what causing a bicycle or a car or uh, even we be able to walk or move on the road. Uh, many uh, positive application for the friction, uh, but also friction uh, causes a drag, causes uh, the wasting of uh, 
energy uh, and resources. So it depends on how you look at it. Often in uh, aviation, we try to avoid friction because uh, it costs money. Uh, mostly we talk about the dry and static friction, uh, wet friction uh, and dynamic friction would be uh, more complex. Uh, we draw the free body diagram as we did and we uh, solve the problem considering the fact that there is a friction. A simple quiz, uh, a friction force always acting to relate it to uh, the surface. Is it always normal to the surface? Is it perpendicular to the surface? Is it uh, 45 degree? Uh, what is to respect the surface? Well, to, to explain that, object always moves along the surface. So friction is always the opposite of the motion. So therefore, friction is always parallel to the surface. If there's a surface friction, it's always parallel. But what causes friction is the normal force uh, of the object, which is perpendicular to the surface. So uh, the answer here is C, parallel. Uh, if a block is stationary, then the friction force acting on it, it is what? So uh, when a block is stationary, the friction force is acting. Uh, is not moving obviously so if it starts to move the friction force is equal to mu k uh, mu n so if it starts to move is this is correct but if it's stationary we haven't reached this far so therefore the answer is the friction force is a smaller i give you another example um, if i have this phone and let's say I put this mouse on top of the phone. So I apply some force here. The, the mouse is not moving. My force is a little bit. So I've not reached to that uh, mu theta, uh, sorry, mu n. Uh, I haven't reached to that uh, force. I add more, more, more until it starts to move. My force is not mu n. Another example is, here is a surface. I'm going to uh, tilt it until I reach to that critical angle. It's not going to slide. And then it starts start to slide. So this explains uh, why the friction force uh, is not constant. It depends on how much force you apply. But at the moment of the motion, the friction force become mu n. Uh, application of friction, we mentioned that, like for example, when you uh, in a car, when you brake, or in a bicycle, uh, you use always friction here. Uh, friction is always not a bad thing. Sometimes it's good as, as we mentioned that. So when you are uh, moving, uh, let's say this box, so you want to know if this is at this position, is it sliding, is it tipping? Uh, so these are the questions in this chapter um, you will be able to answer. So what physical factors involved in this? Uh, we, will, we will cover that in the next few slides briefly. Uh, Characteristics of the friction, uh, so the friction, uh, we mentioned that is always the opposite of the motion and it's parallel to the surface. You have normal force, you are pulling it with uh, this force P. So there would be lots of small values of the friction, small forces, but to combine them all, we assume that it would act at one point right here. And this point, uh, one of the things you have to do is to calculate this point. Uh, and depends on where, at what position, at what height is P applied, this X will move uh, and the value will change. 
this is a very simple way to explain that. So in this case, obviously, the P that you are pulling it should be equal to F, which is the friction force, and W is equal to normal force. So a simple equation will show here. Um, if you are not familiar with the concept of moment, we write uh, some of the moments at this point. And at this point, obviously, W divided by uh, this distance, which is X, should be equal to P multiplied by the H. And here is the equation. That so let's uh, do a simple experiment here and try to calculate the mu uh, S, which is the mu of the static. So often uh, they do this using in a slope. Uh, in a sense, we are measuring the mu between two surfaces, surface of the slope and the block. If you can change the block with different material or you change the surface of the slope, this mu s will change. So uh, simply you have the block. It has the weight of uh, w going down here, w. And obviously this is mg or w sine theta or theta we call it theta and this one is mg or w cosine theta and here is the force of the friction so the force of friction is here but we can just simply write it here force of friction so also we have normal force coming here you know that the force of friction is mu s n, if you can see that. So simply the equation is here, and I write down here now. So mu s n, n, and we have uh, two forces here. The one force is opposing. As you can see here, I wrote uh, mu s n, w sine on y direction if this is uh, depends on i mean if could if this is s x is x or the other way around in this case is in x direction and on y direction we have uh, two forces normal force and the cosine so simply from here you can do a simple calculation uh, bring it this side here divide by each others and you can see tangent of this angle which is the mu s is equal to uh, the static friction. Get back to the same analogy if I have uh, again here. So remember that with this. So I left tilt, tilt, tilt. As soon as you start to move, I measure this angle, and that angle is uh, the tangent of that angle is the static friction between these two surfaces. That's a very practical way to measure. Uh, the friction coefficient uh, between two surfaces. Uh, I actually done lots of these experiments. Uh, just to give you a little background, my PhD, I was working on uh, a coating that it reduces uh, the friction, and I spent numerous hours in lab uh, running different uh, coating thicknesses surfaces to get these uh, coefficient of the friction. Uh, very practical way to measure uh, coefficient of the friction using an, uh, a sliding uh, ramp with variable angles. You get the angle as soon as it moves, then that angle, the tangent of the angle is the coefficient of the friction between those two surfaces. Um, this is actually was the experiment that I was talking about, uh, how easily we can measure that. Uh, maybe spend a couple of uh, minutes and pause and look at this uh, particular graph and everything will become clear. So we know that the maximum amount of friction just before the motion happens is equal to mu s n. Uh, 
it depends on many factors. Uh, usually, before the equilibrium, uh, the mu S n is actually uh, it is the maximum. Therefore, the force of friction is always is smaller. The majority of time is smaller. There's only one uh, scenario that is equal: is that the the object is a start to move. Uh, bear in mind that if the object starts to slip, then we don't have static uh, friction, we have dynamic friction and or kinematic friction or kinetic friction. So uh, that's why uh, the mu s static become the mu k uh, kinetic friction. And often uh, mu k is smaller than mu s because these two surfaces there are uh, mountains and valleys got a stock. If it start to move, the motion will be smoother. So therefore, always, uh, also most of the time, the mu k is smaller than mu s. Let's see a couple of uh, questions here again. You do the free body diagram as usual. You uh, have to make this is important. You have to make assumption. Is it the maximum friction or not? If it's a maximum friction, then uh, friction is mu s n. If it's not reached to maximum friction, you cannot make that assumption. And uh, you can uh, write that equation. Apply the equation of equilibrium, and from that point, you solve a problem. Uh, one of the most important uh, aspect of the friction uh, when you are solving the problem is you determine is it a pending motion or is it uh, and a slipping is it tipping it's it's very different uh, you have to make an assumption and then you have to follow the assumption at the end you have to see the result actually uh, matches your initial assumption uh, often when an object uh, same as this block you have and you're applying a force P, you have the geometry, you have the mu S, you want to know if this object is sliding or is tipping. You might say, what is the difference? The difference is when the object slides, the friction reach the maximum. It is mu S N. When the object is tipping means before it gets to the maximum, the friction causes the tipping. So, uh, let me just give you a little bit uh, uh, more explanation. If a tipping happening, which is this uh, scenario, it happens right at this corner. So what do we have in this case? So in this case, the force of the gravity is halfway through right here in the middle. And this is B divided by 2 can see that x is b divided by 2, but the force of friction never reaches to the maximum. Therefore, the force of friction is uh, unknown. We don't know how much is it. So it's less than mu s n, but how much you have to calculate. So uh, is unknown, you cannot relate it to mu s n. When the sliding happens, on the other hand, force of friction is equal to mu s n. However, the gravity happens halfway through, but you don't know where the actual force of friction at what location is uh, affected. So there's this, there is another variable, which is x is at the location that the force of friction, the summation of all the force of friction is affecting the object. So still, in either cases, you have to be able to calculate. So um, let me just do a little bit more detail on these. Assuming the slipping happens. If a slipping happens, the friction is equal to mu s n. And this x is somewhere between 0 to the half of the width, uh, b divided by 2. So this is the case. F tipping happens, then the force of friction you know is smaller than the mu s n. 
However, the x is b divided by 2. So you can assume 1. Assume, for example, the slipping happens. Do the, all the math. Find the force of friction and n, and you see if this is correct or not. On the other one, uh, you assume that this is correct. You go and find the force of friction and prove that the force of friction is smaller than mu x n. Uh, I need to give you a couple of examples and we do the math and you can see uh, it's, it's a simple concept when it comes to uh, determining is it sliding or is tipping. Okay, here is a practical example. We have this ladder connecting at point A and B, uh, and someone is pulling it. The geometry is given. Uh, the weight of the ladder, which is uniform, is 20 pounds, and obviously applies in the center here, 20 pounds. And the, this wall is, is frictionless, so there is no friction. The friction here is the, the coefficient of friction is mu s equal to 0.8. So what is the minimum required force P to cause a pending motion? Pending motion means whatever comes first, sliding or tipping. Uh, this is what we have to define. Uh, first, to start with free body diagram. We define the unknowns. You make the required and necessary uh, friction assumption, is it sliding or tipping, and free body diagram, and you check your assumption. Uh, here, what we do, uh, first of all, this ladder is leaning against the wall. There is a normal force of NV, normal force at point N, normal force at point A, there's a friction applies right there, which is FA. Dimensions are given. So let's see how many unknown do we have here. So uh, while we have here, this force is unknown. We don't know what is the normal force here. And if the sliding happens, obviously, this F equal to mu S and A. And we know that N A and P are equal, uh, sorry, the weight is equal, so this is equal to 20 pounds. And needless to say that we can calculate this assuming the sliding happens. So in that case, uh, we should carry on and calculate these two values, see if the adds up, the assumption is correct. If not, this is gonna tip. And when it tips, obviously, this value becomes zero because it's, it's actually disconnecting from uh, the wall. And then we continue to do the uh, rest of the calculation. Obviously, in that case, it's always smaller if this is uh, the tipping happens and we have to uh, be careful the calculation is correct we do one or the other one here so assuming this is uh, the in this case here there are four unknowns number n a we know that is equal to p but assuming is unknown uh, equal to weight but assuming is unknown f a n b and p so let's assume it tips. If it tips, NB is equal to zero. So there is no force on the wall. And we write the equation here. Some of the forces on Y equals zero. There are only two forces on Y, NA and the weight. Right away, NA is equal to 20. Good. Uh, some of the moment, uh, if you're not familiar with the moment, it is equal to the force multiplied by the arm or the distance to the point. So we assume uh, the moment about point A here, 
to be equal to zero. So only we have two forces. This is zero and we have this and we have this. So 20 multiplied by three to be equal to uh, unknown force of P multiplied by four, you calculate P is equal to 15. So already you find uh, P equal to 15 here. If P is 15 here, then you know that the force of friction is 15 as well. Okay, if the force of friction is 15, we know the tipping happens, the force of friction should be smaller than mu s n. n a is equal to 20, the friction was 0.8, and the maximum friction is 20 multiplied by 0.8, which is 16, therefore, uh, it adds up because the force of friction we calculated 15 is smaller than 20 multiplied by 0 0.8 16 which is F max so therefore the assumption that we did is correct so as we mentioned this is this is correct now I want to go uh, and assume the other uh, scenario, assuming that the sliding happens. If a sliding happens, this N is always positive going this way. Sliding happens, uh, this force becomes 16. This is 20. Well, uh, we do the same calculation here. Uh, and we can simply calculate uh, that this force P, whatever is that, plus this NB is equal to 16. Uh, on the other hand, we write the sum of the force at this point is equal to zero. This multiplied by this length, NB8, clockwise and then p uh, multiplied by 4 clockwise it should be equal to 20 multiplied by uh, this length which is 3 so you continue to the add and you realize this value the answer of n b the reaction force on the wall will become negative which is means incorrect so therefore in this case if you would have start from the assumption of uh, sliding happens, the answer would have been incorrect. Let's have another example. Uh, here is a person is try to uh, push a barrel in an angle and we want to know, and all the dimensions are given here, we want to know which happens first. Same analogy. So the force applied this direction and we assume in this case uh, a sliding happens. So let's assume in this case a sliding happens. If a sliding happens, the force of friction is maximum is equal to uh, 0.5, which is the coefficient of the friction n. And now uh, we have to calculate n. Now in this case, n has two components associated with the n contribute to n. One is the weight, 100 pounds. And one is the fact that the person is pushing it down adds to the friction, by the way. So this person, by having this force not completely uh, horizontal, but in an angle toward facing down, uh, it does uh, add to the friction. So it's going to be... Uh, this angle is... If its angle is theta, it would be uh, this force sine of the angle would add to the weight and uh, causes the end. So, draw the equation here. So, the forces on x equals zero, we have this and this here. Uh, and so, the forces on y equals zero, we have x com y component of this, uh, this. Uh, weight and the reaction force and you can simply uh, solve it and in this case you realize 
that uh, the x, which is this length, is equal to 1.44, which is smaller than half of this the width. So it still is okay. Our assumption is correct, and therefore this drum, this barrel, will slide. It does not tick. Uh, interesting question. Uh, tipping and sliding could be a little confusing, so whatever you assume, you have to realize. Again, I repeat, when you assume as a sliding happens, friction force is maximum. And then you have to find that X, because you don't know where the force of friction uh, is applied. If you assume it's tipping, you know the location is very far corner of the object, but you don't know what is the force of friction, because it's never reach the maximum of mu s n. So either way, you have to make an assumption and prove your assumption is correct.